Welcome to LG Path Lab's monthly pathology webinar series. I'm Dr. Limsi Gupta, who is going to present cut up and histopathology reporting for wide local excision of breast and mastectomy specimens today. At LG Path Lab, we follow Royal College of Pathologists guidelines and minimum data sets for all cancer reporting, which includes breast carcinoma as well, in conjunction with NHS breast screening program. First and foremost important thing is clinical history. So for diagnosing and for reporting a breast resection specimen, we need to know the breast core diagnosis and FNA diagnosis, whatever was done previously. Then the location of the tumor and side of the specimen and whether radioactive dye was used for sentinel node localization, which is important as these cases should be kept in formalin for 24 hours following surgery in a designated area in lab before handling them to minimize radioactivity in the specimens. Then whether neoadjuvant chemotherapy or radiotherapy was given prior to surgery. In cases of re-excision, it is important to know the previous incompletely excised margins. For specimen details, it is important to know the side of the specimen, whether it was left or right, and then tally it from the details given on the request card and also from orientation markers on the specimen. In cases of discrepancy, you must first contact the surgical team or the surgeon himself or herself before proceeding with the cutter. Then the type of specimen and orientation markers used. This is a wide local excision, and in this you can see a short superior suture and a long lateral suture, which is usually done in our department. So this was a left side wide local excision, and we can orientate it accordingly. This is skin and nipple sparing mastectomy specimen, and uh, this is a wire guided specimen. Look at the radiograph if available to locate the mass and calcification, which is very helpful in cases with only DCIS. It also helps in histological sampling. Then orientate the specimen. We have already spoken about this slide. Mention if guide wire is present, its location of insertion and ending, weight of the specimen and dimensions of the specimen from mediolateral then superior to inferior and anterior to posterior dimensions. Differentially ink the specimen, which is very helpful in case you have to go back to the specimen after the cut up and also while reporting. This is wide local excision with differential inking. Then slice at three to four millimeters intervals in cases of wide local excisions and at one centimeter intervals in mastectomy specimens. Document number and thickness of slices. Tell the direction of slicing, whether you have sliced from medial to lateral, lateral to medial, superior to inferior, anterior to posterior, and so on. And also, I personally take lateral most and medial most slices as double or triple the width as compared to middle slices and document that in your report. This helps in taking cruciates if the tumor is near the medial or lateral margins. Describe the tumor, whether it is single tumor or multiple tumors. If it is multiple tumors, distance between the separate tumor masses, tell the quadrantic location in relation to nipple, the number of slices involved and specify which slices are involved and whether it is in consecutive slices. Then talk about margins and nearest margins to the tumor. Nipple and areola in cases of mastectomy, whether they are retracted or involved or Paget's disease is seen uh, macroscopically and talk about background breast if it is normal or shows some pathology. Coming to block taking. We need to take slices with tumor, specify which slices. Sometimes mega, clock, mega blocks can be very helpful for DCIS and post chemo and radiotherapy specimens. Include close margins and mention which margins have been included. Then take at least three to four blocks from tumor. 
slices adjacent to tumor from on both the sides and specify slice numbers. Medial and lateral slices for cruciates, especially in wide local excision, nipple and areola when present, and background press from all four quadrants. And if it is a small wide local excision up to three centimeters, then take it all. This is a template macro report which we use at LG Path Lab for wide local excision of breast. It goes like this. This is a left or right wire guided wide local excision of breast orientated by a long lateral and a short superior suture. It weighs so and so grams, measures so and so medial to lateral, superior to inferior and anterior to posterior. The specimen is inked as follows, whatever the color code is. The specimen is sliced in X number of slices from medial to lateral or lateral to medial, whatever way you have taken the uh, slices. Then slice one is the medial or lateral most slice. The guide wire enters the specimen from so and so aspect and ends in slice this near so and so margin. There is a firm white stillet mass in slices so and so. It measured so and so millimeters medial to lateral, superior to inferior and anterior to posterior. And then mention all the margins and especially the nearest margins. And in case you think that uh, uh, like uh, a few margins are more than say 10 millimeters or 15 millimeters away, then you can say so. Just mention the closest ones. Now coming to microscopic reporting. First, we have to tell the type of invasive tumor. For example, whether it is infiltrating ductal type of carcinoma NOS or any special types or mixed types. In mixed types, we have to mention what types of tumors are present and in what percentages. Then type and nuclear grade of DCIS and microinvasive carcinoma in cases of extensive DCIS. This is example of mucinous carcinoma. This is example of invasive lobular carcinoma. Then coming to tumor grading, we use Nottingham criteria, which is based on three criteria. That is gland or SNS formation, nuclear ATP or pleomorphism and mitosis. For score one of gland formation, it is more than 75% of uh, forms uh, SNI. Score two is 10 to 75% of invasive tumor forms SNI. And score three is less than 10% forms SNI. For nuclear ATP and pleomorphism, Score one is when nuclei are less than 1.5 uh, times size of a normal uh, 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 normal nuclei and with minor variation in size and shape. Score two is nuclei 1.5 to two times the normal size of the nuclei, often vesicular nucleoli visible and with some variation in size and shape. Score three is with markedly enlarged vesicular nuclei which is usually more than two times the size of normal nucleus with nucleoli often prominent with marked variation in size and shape. For mitosis, like uh, uh, it depends on the field diameter of the of your microscope and for uh, 0 0.50 millimeters field diameter, M1 is up to seven mitosis per 10 hyperfields. M2 is eight to 14 mitosis per 10 hyperfields and M3 is 15 or more mitosis per 10 hyperfields. Then add up all these points and uh, from all these three criteria. So grade one will be anything adding up to 0.3, 4 or 5. Grade two is 0.6 or 7 and grade three is 0.8 or 9. Measure the invasive tumor with the in all three dimensions and give maximum dimension in your conclusion. If multiple separate foci are present, measure the largest focus of the invasive tumor distance between the nearest foci and span of all the foci. If free excision specimen is there, then take into consideration the measurements of the original tumor also. Then mention the total tumor size, which is the invasive tumor plus DCIS, like if uh, DCIS goes beyond invasive tumor. For staging purposes, only the invasive component is included. If multifocal tumor is present, only the largest focus is included. Lymphovascular invasion is very important and the features that may be helpful in trying to identify vascular invasions are group of tumor cells in spaces around the main tumor mass. 
Ensure that any spaces are lined by endothelial cells and are not fat spaces. Then the presence of adjacent vascular channels that may be of varying sizes. The presence within the space of erythrocytes and or thrombus. Beware of the retraction artifacts, which are shrinkage artifact, which results in nests of cells having the shape of the space in which they lie. Endothelial cells will not be seen. If in doubt, do endothelial marker CD31, 34, and D240. Then for margins, you have to mention all the margins in white local excision and uh, spe with spe special mention about nearest margin and all relevant margins. Radial margins are very important in this. That is your superior, inferior, lateral, and medial margins. Take into consideration the shaves if included in other specimens along with the main white local excision for the conclusive report. Paget's disease, whether present or not. Then hormone receptor status. We do ER, PR, and HER2, and we follow ALRED scoring for ER and PR. For ALRED scoring, it is score for proportion and score for intensity. For score for proportion, is zero is with no staining. Score one is less than 1% of nuclei stain for ER or PR. For score 2, it is 1 to 10% of nuclei staining. For 3, it is 11 to 33% of nuclei staining. For score 4, it is 34 to 66% of nuclei staining. And for score 5, it is 67 to 100% nuclei staining. For intensity, it is 1 for weak staining, 2 for moderate staining, and 3 for strong staining. And the scores are summed up to give a maximum of 8. This is example of seven out of eight with moderate, like some cells were moderate stain, staining and uh, more than 67% in the total tumor. So it is seven out of eight. This is eight on eight. HER2 is important to for as a prerequisite for the use of trastuzumab. HER2 status should only be determined on the invasive portion of the tumor. For score zero, it is no staining or membrane staining in less than 10% of tumor cells. Score one is showing faint membrane staining in more than 10%. Score two is a weak to moderate complete membrane staining in more than 10%. And such cases are borderline cases and are sent for ISH. For score three, it is a strong complete membrane staining in more than 10%, which is positive. This is example of equivocal score 2 HER2. And this is example of score 3 positive HER2. HER2 with fish in equivocal cases on immunohistochemistry are sent for the fish staining. And uh, these are conventionally, conventionally expressed as the ratio of HER2 signal to chromosome 17 signal. Tumor showing a ratio of more than two should be considered as positive. In this case, it is clearly more than two. So it was reported as positive. Coming to sentinel nodes, sum submit the sentinel nodes in entirety with slicing at two to three millimeters intervals perpendicular to the long axis of the lymph node. Three levels should be done on HNE. The role of immunohistochemistry, that is epithelial markers in all the cases is unclear. It increases detection of isolated tumor cells, but clinical significance is uncertain. Intraoperative determination of nodal involvement can be done either through frozen section, in which accuracy is a bit doubtful, and by OSNA, in which sensitivity is a bit doubtful, but that is uh, uh, taken as much better option as compared to frozen section. OSNA is intraoperative or postoperative lymph node analysis, which is automated semi-quantitative in vitro diagnostic test. OSNA amplifies cytokeratin-19 mRNA by a specific and sensitive isothermal procedure called RTLAMP, that is reverse transcription loop mediated isothermal amplification. The progress of the amplification is monitored in real time and the total process of OSNA assay takes about 30 minutes. It measures the amount of CK19 mRNA which correlates with the size of metastatic foci. 
The results of the OSNA assay give an indication for the size of metastatic fossa in a lymph node and results are displayed as 2 plus for macrometastasis, 1 plus for micrometastasis and neg minus for negative. Now, axillary nodes should also be embedded in entirety and they are reported as meta macrometastasis if uh, the metastatic foci are more than 2 millimeters, micrometastasis if my metastatic foci are between 0.2 and 2 millimeters, isolated tumor cells if the foci are less than 0.2 millimeters. Then we have to give TNM staging, which is uh, PT0 is no evidence of primary tumor. PTIS is carcinoma in situ. PT1 is 2 centimeters or less. PT2 is more than 2 centimeters, but less than 5 centimeters. PT3 is tumor of any size growing into the chest wall or skin. Uh, sorry, it is more than 5 centimeters across. And PT4 is tumor of any size growing into the chest wall or skin. This includes inflammatory breast cancer. Now, please note that staging of breast carcinoma is based on the largest focus of invasive carcinoma. Then these are staging for the lymph nodes in which PTNA is 1 to 3 axillary lymph nodes positive with more than 2 millimeters tumor meds. If it is less than that, then it is PT, uh, PN1 MI micrometastasis. And N1B is internal mammary lymph nodes or sentinel lymph node positive. And 1C is both 1A and 1B. 2A is 4 to 9 axillary lymph nodes positive, and 2B is internal mammary lymph nodes clinically detected. N3 is any of the following. 3A is 10 or more axillary lymph nodes or infraclavicular lymph nodes. And 3B is either at least one axillary lymph node and has enlarged internal mammary lymph nodes or four or more axillary lymph nodes and tiny amounts of cancer found in internal mammary lymph nodes on sentinel lymph node biopsy. And 3 is, uh, 3C is supraclavicular lymph node positive. Then we should also mention NPI, that is Nottingham Prognostic Index, which is based on the size of the largest invasive focus and the lymph nodes, number of lymph nodes involved and grade of the tumor. This can be very helpful in predicting five-year survival rate of the patients by using their scoring system. This is a microscopy template report used for breast resection specimens at LG Path Lab. In conclusion, we usually include all the important parameters of the breast report, including ER, PR, HER2. If it was done on previous score biopsy, then we don't need to repeat on the current excision specimen and uh, mention it that it was so and so score on the previous biopsies and the histology numbers. And also don't forget to include NPI and TNM staging. Thank you so much. If you have any queries, please leave them in the comment box and I will get back to you ASAP. Thanks, Nia, for your help. Thank you very much, Dr. Lindsay, for the lovely presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.